All right, today we are going to be working on the iPhone 6 Plus. Before you start your repair, we definitely re recommend our toolkit that we saw at Injured Gadgets. It's got pretty much all the tools you're going to need to repair this uh, device, including the pentalobe screwdriver, which opens the two bottom screws, a uh, nylon black spudger that's great to prevent static electricity on your phone, the Microphillips double zero screwdriver. Um, it has some s additional spudgers, a, a microfiber cleaning cloth just to wipe off your screen when you're done, and a few other things that will be useful to you. Today we're going to be working on an iPhone 6 Plus. Remember to always turn off your iPhone before you start a repair. To begin, use your pentalobe screwdriver and remove the two screws on the bottom of your iPhone 6 Plus. Alright, next using your black nylon spudger, you're going to want to get in right under where the headphone jack is. There's a little divot there. Um, sometimes it might take a little bit to get in there, but you're going to lift the screen from right there and slowly pop it out. Alright, you want to notice that at the top of the screen, your actual assembly is still connected to the back housing of the phone with the following screws. You want to go ahead and remove these screws. They all use the double zero Phillips screwdriver. Alright, once those screws are removed, go ahead and remove that little bracket that covers up these flex cables. Once again, use your black nylon spudger to disconnect these flex cables. There are a total of four. We always recommend using this nylon spudger because it will be plastic, so it's anti-static. It's not going to damage your phone. But we do recommend being careful here because, I mean, you don't want to break any of these little pins that the flex cables plug into the board with. Alright, at this point you now have your screen assembly with small parts separated from the back housing of your phone. From here on out we're only going to be working with the part on the left hand side until we reassemble the phone of course. So now on our website we carry two different versions of the screen. One is going to be a completely assembled version as seen right here. It probably will not have the home button. Um, you always want to use your original home button because your original home button uh, we'll have the Touch ID sensor synced up with it. An aftermarket home button will click, it will be functional, but your Touch ID will never work. The second part we're using is the one on my right right here. I'm going to show you guys how to actually do this one because it's a little bit more intensive obviously. But either one you choose, we sell them both on our website. They're both completely usable. The one on the left was easier to use, the one on the right takes a little bit more time. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys how to swap all these parts over from your broken screen over to the screen that was on the right. So we're going to go ahead and start using our double zero Phillips screwdriver and the first thing we're going to do is remove the home button with touch ID sensor. Um, really if you bought the screen on the left this is the only step you're going to need to swap over because it already has all the brackets, the front camera, the proximity sensor, everything already installed on it. So the only thing you want to swap over is going to be this part right here. You're going to remove those two screws and then you're going to disconnect the home button flex on the left hand side right here and then you can go ahead and pop the home button out. Now be careful because that adhesive right there can rip um, where the flex cable actually is. So sometimes you might want to use a little bit of heat to this, use a heat gun, a blow dryer, whatever it may be. Just be careful. Alright, so now we're going to be working on the top of the screen assembly and we're going to remove the ear speaker, front camera, proximity sensor, and the brackets covering the ear speaker. Once again, go ahead and use your double zero Phillips screwdriver and remove the following screws as shown here.
And once those screws are out, go ahead and remove that bracket. And, and now you're going to go ahead and remove that ear speaker that goes under the bracket. And you're going to remove the front camera and proximity sensor flex. It is held in by a little bit of adhesive, so make sure not to pull too hard because you don't want to rip that flex cable. Okay, using your double zero flip screwdriver, go ahead and remove the screws on the sides of your frame because we will need to remove this frame as well as that top screw and bottom screw shown here uh, and put them on the new screen assembly. Alright, with those separated, now you have your back plate. Don't pull this off too soon because it's still attached with the long home button flex at the bottom. Now to remove this, I don't recommend pulling it. I don't recommend using a spudger. I recommend using a heat gun or blow dryer to loosen up the adhesive. If you don't do this, I can promise you 9 times out of 10 this flex cable will rip. Go and heat up both sides of where this flex cable is held in with adhesive. And once you believe you have enough heat, I mean, I wouldn't go too long, maybe 10 seconds total. Uh, once you have enough heat, then go ahead and use your spudger, your nylon spudger. And it should come loose pretty easily, as shown here. Okay, so the part on the right is pretty much the part we saw on our website that I showed you guys earlier. You're going to go ahead and transfer over all the parts you just removed to your brand new part um, but that's pretty much the complete disassembly so one thing you'll want to notice on our parts we do have the camera bracket and the proximity sensor already pre-installed on them um, you want to remove this little tape right here as well but if your screen doesn't have that camera sense that camera bracket and proximity sensor already pre-installed you will want to remove them from the broken screen and transfer them over. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these parts back on, starting with that metal back shield. Make sure it's in place. Make sure that little home button flex, that long logic board flex, excuse me, is properly lined up. And once all that's done, then you go ahead and screw in those six screws back in place. Alright, this is probably going to be the hardest part of the entire repair, putting the front camera proximity sensor back into place. Um, you want to watch very carefully where I line up the brackets, the front camera needs to go on that hole, the proximity sensor needs to go on that hole. Uh, you want to make sure that when you line up your ear speaker, it's touching the metal contacts on the back of this flex cable. So <clears throat> this is probably the hardest part, literally, of the entire repair, just putting this one flex cable back in. It is a little bit time consuming, but other than that, this repair should be a breeze. All right, once that's put in place, go ahead and take that little uh, shield that goes over the ear speaker and make sure it's on there very tightly and you get to screw it back in with the three Phillips screwdrivers. Please make sure it's lined up properly. If it's not, when you place it down onto the back housing of your phone, you could end up cracking the top part of your screen.
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and place our home button and flex cable back in its spot. So the first thing you wanna do is uh, go ahead and just line it up properly, make sure it's on there straight. Make sure those two little white pins are holding that flex cable board properly. And go ahead and plug it in before you take the bracket and place it on top of the back of the home button and screw it all in. Make sure that's a tight click so that your Touch ID sensor continues to work. Alright, now with our front assembly completely put back together, we can go ahead and plug it back into the logic board and back housing of the phone. Go ahead and plug in the four flex cables. Make sure you have a nice tight click on this one. If it's not on there properly, you will have lines or blocks on your screen. So that one's extremely important. Another thing to note is if you do end up with lines or blocks on your screen, you want to go ahead and disconnect the battery. Then you're going to want to plug these in. Then you want to reconnect the battery. Once the battery is reconnected, then you can go ahead and turn on your phone. So once again, the most important flex cable is the top flex cable that I plugged in. It's the longest one on the, on the uh, screen assembly. If it's not perfectly straight, if it doesn't click into every single little divot of the board, you will have lines on your screen. So once these cables are in, go ahead and take that little bracket, screw that back in. At this point you can go ahead and place your screen back down, make sure to slide it in from the top first and then gently go along the sides and clip it into place. Make sure you go from the top first, it's very important. Once that's done, go ahead and put the two screws on the bottom back in with your pentalobe screwdriver and your phone repair has been complete. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, visit our website, leave a comment below, like us on Facebook. And remember to buy all your parts and accessories at InjuredGadgets.com. We have uh, listed all these parts as well as the tools in the description below. Thank you.